Hello and welcome to Conditionally Formatting Variances. My name is Jeff, I'm glad you're here. Let's just jump right in. I recently received a question about formatting variances. Let me read the question. If a cell is up to 10% less than another cell, have a yellow color. If it's more than 10% less, red. How is such a formula written in the conditional formatting tab? And I'm gonna answer that question in this video. Exercise one. In this first exercise, we're just gonna get warmed up with conditional formatting and how to apply multiple rules. Here's the range we wanna conditionally format, and we wanna apply these rules. If it's less than or equal to 200, red. Between 500 and 700, inclusive, orange. And greater than or equal to 800, green. We can do this by setting up multiple rules. Select the entire range and go to conditional formatting. Now, there are many built-in rules under highlight cell rules. However, since we're going to apply multiple rules, I'm just going to go straight to the manage rules command. And then I'm going to click new rule. Now I'm gonna say format only those cells that contain, and here we have a lot of choices. So depending on what you're working on, you're gonna to wanna to investigate these options. Here we're gonna say if the cell value is less than or equal to 200, we wanna apply a red format. So we click format, and here we can choose a lot of different options from numbers, fonts, borders, and fills. We're just gonna keep it simple and go with a red font. Click okay, okay. And to see the results, we're gonna click apply. So far, so good. Now we're gonna set up a new rule. Format only cells that contain a cell value that is between 500 and 700. And this uses inclusive logic. Format, font, this time we're gonna go with this orange yellow color and click okay. Okay, and we can see the results by clicking apply. And finally, we'll go with a new rule. Format only cells that contain a cell value that is greater than or equal to 800 format, and we're gonna go with green. Click OK and OK, and we can click Apply to see this. And before I click OK, I just wanna point out here that we have multiple rules, and in an upcoming exercise, I'm gonna talk about managing the order of these rules and how they're evaluated. For now, I'm just gonna click OK. And now we've seen that we can apply multiple conditional formatting rules to the same range. And now that we're comfortable with that, let's go to the next exercise, exercise two. All right, now let's calculate our variance or change column. Equals current minus prior divided by prior, and we can just fill this down. And the goal is to highlight this yellow if it's a decrease up to 10%, and red if it's a decrease greater than 10%. So to accomplish this, we're gonna apply multiple rules. Conditional formatting, manage rules. New rule, if the cell value is between zero and minus 0 0.1, then we wanna go with a font that is essentially yellow, and we can apply this change. And now let's create a new rule. Format those cells less than minus 0 0.1. Format, and here we'll go with red. Click OK, click OK, and we can apply, and we can click OK. So that's how we can apply multiple rules to the variance or change column itself. But what if we wanted to avoid creating this type of helper column? What if instead we wanted to apply conditional formatting to the actual values? Can we do that? Sure, and that takes us to the next exercise, exercise three. So we wanna apply the same logic as before, which is basically if it's less than zero, yellow, and if it's less than negative 10%, red. So rather than type the formula directly into our conditional formatting screen, we'll create a temporary helper column just to get our formula working correctly. Equals this minus this divided by this. Okay, and if we fill this down, we see this gives us the basic variance. To work with conditional formatting, we need to convert this into a formula that returns a true or false value. So what we can say is, is all of this stuff less than a negative 10%? Enter. And now we can fill this down. And this converts this into a true or false value. Before we copy paste this into conditional formatting though, we need to lock down the column references we'll leave the row references relative. To create an absolute column reference, we simply insert a dollar sign in front of the column references. Enter. Now what we can do is select this formula, Control C, Copy, and then select this entire range. Conditional formatting, Manage Rules, New Rule. Here I'm gonna use a formula, Control V, Paste, and now let's do the format. We want the font to be red. Click OK, click OK, and let's apply it to take a look. That looks good, and we click OK. Now let's convert this formula to analyze if it's less than zero. Less than zero. Control C, copy that. Select this entire range again. Conditional formatting, manage rules, new rule. 
use formula, control V paste, select format. We're gonna go with this, click okay, okay, and apply. And now we see something strange. We see that yellow is applied, but like the red like stopped working. So what's going on? Well, here's the deal. All of these conditional formatting rules are evaluated, but since these are both formatting the font color, the first one that hits true is the one that's applied. So what do we do? Well, one option is just to switch the order of the rules. For example, I can move this one down and now click apply. And now if it's less than 10%, red is applied. And now if it's less than zero, yellow will be applied, but only to the ones that aren't already red. So the order of these rules matter. Click OK. We can remove this helper column and now we're good to go. And that's how we can conditionally format variances. We got warmed up by understanding we can apply multiple rules to the same range. Then we formatted the variance column. Then we applied conditional formatting to the whole row and didn't have that variance column. So those are a few options depending on what you're working on. Thanks for joining me. Have a great day. Hey, Excel user. If you ever need to create summary reports, check out my pivot table for beginners video. It starts at the beginning and shows how to store the data transactions in a table and then how to summarize those transactions with a pivot table report. I hope it helps unlock the incredible power of pivot tables. This video is a production of Excel University. 